We do not usually time it out that good. End of the song. Time to start the service. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, why don't you stand with us? We're going to pray to start our service this morning. And uh, we're going to do some worship and give God the glory for everything that he's done for us. So, God, thank you so much for your great love. Um, we give this time to you. Holy Spirit, we just invite you here into this place. We know that you're here. Help us to sense your presence. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Remind us of how much the Father loves us. And uh, we just thank you for that. We give this time to you, and uh, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, it's call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Bought me with his precious blood Oh, to grace a greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. That thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to believe the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Clear my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts of love.
good to be here today with all of you. Uh, Craig and I were out for a couple of weeks, um, among with several other people that I see here this morning, with um, COVID, and the isolation was really hard. We watched online, um, and we're very thankful for the online <laughs> services, but all I saw was the back of your heads. <laughs> and I really miss seeing your faces. I missed sharing worship with you and hearing you sing and fellowship. And it just made me think of these verses that I wanted to share with you. From Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And I am just so thankful that we are here together today. Come Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice Oh, you led me through the fire And in darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have labeled. I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, 
so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm going to sing because all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna see of the goodness of God oh, I'm gonna see of the goodness of God these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free oh amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to life Take our failures, you take our weakness. You set your treasure in jars of clay. So take this heart, Lord, I'll be your vessel, the world to see your life in me. Oh, amazing. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to life A 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, amazing how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. Self down, raising up the broken to life. talking about sharing our faith with others the next three weeks and man if you've experienced the goodness of God isn't that something to celebrate isn't that something worth sharing um, there's a old we're gonna sing a Stephen Curtis Chapman song next but there's another Stephen Curtis Chapman song he's one of my faves but he wrote a song of it was kind of had to do with, who remembers, uh, what's the name of this show? You want to be a millionaire, right? And you won the million dollars, but then you just buried it somewhere. Would you tell anybody? I mean, if you won a million dollars, wouldn't you be excited? I'd be excited. I could pay off my house, my student loans that I'm still paying on. Um, that would be pretty amazing. We have Jesus. Can I get an amen? Can I get another amen? Oh, sorry. I need to get some mics so that I can hear you because with these things in my ears, I'm like, wow, that was really quiet. <laughs> God is good. Amen. And all the time, God is, good. God is good. We have this treasure that we can share with other people. And this next song is called Much of You. And it goes like this, how could I stand here and watch the sunrise? Follow the mountains where they touch the sky. Ponder the vastness and the depths of the sea. And think for a moment the point of it all was to make much of me. Because I'm just a whisper and you are the thunder. God, the creator of the universe, loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus for us. And that ought to make us just about want to jump and shout. I don't know about you, but that last song when we were singing that part, sometimes we get stuck on those words that we've sang over and over and over and how powerful they are. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. <sighs> That's good stuff, people. We're gonna sing about that. How could I stand here and watch the sun rise? I follow the mountains where they touch the sky and ponder the vastness 
and the depths of the sea. I think for a moment the point of it all was to make much of me. Cause I'm just a whisper and you are the thunder. And I want to make much of you, Jesus. I want to make much of your love. I want to live today to give you the praise that you alone are so worthy of. I want to make much of your mercy. I want to make much of your cross. I give you my life, take it and let it be yours, to make much of you. And how can I need and think of the cross The thorns and the whip And the nails and the spear The infinite cost To purchase my pardon And bear all my shame Think I have anything worth boasting in except for your name cause I am a sinner and you are the Savior and I want to make much of you Jesus I want to make much of your love I want to live today Give you the praise that you alone are so worthy of. I want to make much of your mercy. I want to make much of your cross. I give you my life. Take it and let it be yours to make much of you. This is your love, oh God, not to make much of me, but to send your own Son so that we can make much of you for all eternity. And I want to make much of you, Jesus. I want to make much of your love live today. To give you the praise that you alone are so worthy of. I want to make much of your mercy. I want to make much of your cross. I give you my life. Take it and let it be yours to make much of you. Good morning. And good morning to those of you who are watching online. I know that you're not watching it live today, but uh, hopefully we'll have that fixed and moving forward. It'll be live online moving forward. Um, I have the privilege today of sharing with you what's going on in the life of Sherwood Community Friends Church. I love this because I am a firm believer that the life of the church is more than coming here on Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings is important. I love coming together, seeing all of your faces, hearing about how your week has been. But I also really believe 
that our role in the life of the church is to be engaged Monday through Saturday. What are we doing outside of Sunday mornings? How are we showing up in the life of our community? How are we showing up in the life of each other and doing life together? So uh, I wanted to just touch on a couple of, of things. The first is that a couple weeks ago, Bob sent out a, a last-minute plea. Willowbrook Food Pantry had gotten in a ton of food, ton of food. And so I just wanted to update about how that went. They got everything done in 80 minutes and had 10 people there. So I don't know if you have gotten a chance yet to go and serve with us at Willowbrook Food Pantry. We do cleaning, we stock shelves, etc. cetera. And um, usually there's a good amount of food to put away and some cleaning to do, and it usually takes us about an hour to get everything done. Well, this time they had gotten a ton of donations. They, they even contacted us ahead of time and said, please help, make sure you have lots of people. So 10 people there. Um, Three-fourths of them were from our church, and then we had some uh, other people there that weren't there. But Bob actually sent out an update to somebody who was asking about this and said it was the largest amount of food that he's seen there, and it tired out Bob. So if it tired out Bob, then you know it must have been a lot of food. Um, but teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, so a couple other things that are going on in the life of our church Next week on Sunday after church, we are having a potluck, a family fun day, a potluck, games, we're going to have puzzles. We're just going to gather together in the fellowship hall and be together. So what makes a potluck successful? <laughs> good food and good people, yes. Emphasis on the food part. So please come and bring a dish to share and then bring people. That's not just yourself or your household, but bring some friends. Sometimes... Um, you know, getting people to come to a church service might be a little bit more uh, challenging. But to say, hey, come play some games, eat some food, let's just hang out together, that can be a little bit easier to, to uh, invite. So our Mission and Outreach Committee is um, hosting this and, and had this idea to do this as a way to invite in people who might not join us at 1030 for Sunday service, but they might come over in the afternoon. So uh, make sure you invite somebody. So bring people and bring a dish to share. So bring food. Um, on Wednesdays, what's been going on on Wednesday nights? Prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. So we are this week, we're going to put a little different spin on our what has been our traditional prayer meeting. We are focusing on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday starts the Lent season. Lent is a time period to lead up to Easter. Uh, it's a really good time to reflect on the 40 days prior to Easter, the resurrection of Christ about what he did for us, about slowing down our pace, backing ourselves up, and reflecting on what he did. He came to earth, left all of glory, came to earth to be with us, to walk the earth with us, to know what it was like to be human, who was human. Then he died and he rose again, all for us. So we're going to be this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, right in this room, having our Ash Wednesday service. Um, uh, alongside of that prayer meeting. So um, I hope you'll be there. I hope to see you there this Wednesday. It'll be really good. Now, uh, we also have our new response card. If you got your bulletin, you'll see the response card. Who is the response card for? Let's try it again. Who's the response card for? Hey, there we go. Perfect. So uh, on, on the one side, we like knowing your name, at least, uh, if there's no other information to update. But on the back side, what's going good in your life? And what's something we can be praying for? What's something that's hard in your life? Or the life of somebody that you know? Uh, but we love to be praying for you. We love to be praising God with you. We love to be encouraging you. We love to be uh, praying for the things that you're going through that are difficult. And uh, that's what makes us part of being in community that we're doing life together. And it's hard to do life together when we don't know what's going on in each other's lives. So um, make sure you take some time, fill that out. You can either drop it in the offering uh, box that's back there or give it to Bob or myself um, or possibly Priscilla too. Priscilla, yep, okay, great. Um, so, uh, and then as I mentioned, the response card, you can drop it in the offering bin back there. Uh, we also uh, appreciate any tithes and offerings. Those tithes and offerings go to 
that work of being able to be present in our community, different things that we do for, uh, through mission and outreach, our mission and outreach committee, we're doing a lot of talking right now and discerning about our friends' kids' ministry and what that's going to look like. Uh, and so those funds can, can, will contribute to that. We're able to support our partners, Willowbrook Food Pantry, Good Samaritan Ministries in Uganda, and the Howells in Ireland. So um, any of those, those ways to give, uh, you can do that online. You can do that by dropping in a check in the box back there. You can mail it in. Uh, but let's go ahead and pray right now for the things going on in the life of our church, as well as our tithes and our offerings. Father, we're before you right now, we're thankful that we're able to be here today. We're grateful that we're present to be able to study your word, to understand what your word says, and to be doing life together. We pray for these, uh, these events that we've talked about, these occurrences, the fun day next week. We are praying for our Ash Wednesday service on this Wednesday and uh, all the other things that are going on, committee meetings and friends groups that are meeting and practice for, for worship practice on Thursday nights. We, we lift all of these things up to you. We don't do them for our glory. We do them only for your glory. We pray for the tithes and the offerings as, uh, as they come in to be resources to be used by you to further your kingdom. We pray that you would bless that, that you would multiply that, that you would give us wisdom as a congregation as we steward those finances. And we pray for the rest of our service today that you would be with us and near us. And not only would you be with us and near us, but that we would know your presence in our conversations today, in our, in our um, hearing of what your word has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I'll be reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready, to en ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who would ask you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience, so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than it than should be, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness the the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Good morning. I don't have those in-ears. That was a good morning. Nicely done. I have lots of props on here. That's why I don't have room for my water on there. So we're in a 12-week series called Vision. Last six weeks, we talked about belonging into God's family and how one becomes part of that. We also talked about pursuing the leading of the Holy Spirit and how we are pursuing the Lord in relationship for, uh, with prayer, how we hear the Holy Spirit speak to us, and then what is our response when we do hear? What are we supposed to do? How do we cooperate with the Holy Spirit? Today we start week one for our purpose word, sharing. So belonging, pursuing, sharing, and then the following, the, the, the final will be honoring. So I get the privilege of speaking on sharing today. Let's pray. Father, I just invite you into our conversation. Have every word off of my lips be your words to penetrate all of our hearts. Have your spirit and your love be sensed and felt today and experienced in a way that's fresh, new, and life-changing. Help us to leave here transformed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. What is your prized possession? Call it out. A guitar. A guitar. Joel, nice, yes. And Rob, Rob's ears just perked up when you said guitar over there. <laughs> I said, oh, 
What kind of a guitar do you play? Acoustic. Okay. All right. Let's talk yes. You're welcome, Rob. <laughs> Moving on, prized possessions. What other prized possessions do we have? Bible. Your Bible. Family. Family. Oh, yes. Car. Your car, although you wanted to trade it in for something else recently. Yeah. Okay. okay, something faster. What else? What other prized possessions do we have? Camera, camera. yes. What kind of camera? Canon. Any other prized possessions? What's that? Friends? Yeah. And your son is wearing a friend's shirt next to him there. <laughs> Are you signaling, Kathy, that Roger is your prized possession? Okay. Roger is a great catch. Yes. I, I, if, if he was my husband, I would be prized to have him as my possession. So you're honored for that. One more. Somebody else. Prize possession. Okay. Your faith in Jesus. See, yeah. The gift of music. Ooh, Wendy, deep. Yes, Roger, Wendy for the win. I think um, I'm going to be very non-spiritual and talk about some inanimate objects here. So, one of my prized possessions is my cold plunge. There it is. <laughs> Brian's over here sighing. So this is my cold plunge, and I start my day with about three to five minutes in the morning. Uh, the benefits of cold plunge are increased energy. It's like you're, you're drinking a, a big a gallon of espresso, and you have the, the energy for the entire day without the caffeine crash. You have active recovery for sore muscles, so it, it actually helps with that. Immune support, it, it flushes your lymph nodes and your, your system that detoxes your body in three to five minutes, mind you. And it increases your, your hormone dopamine. Now, dopamine is the happy hormone, they call it. So it helps people with depression or anxiety or any, any sort of, of mood improvement. It gives you that. And it starts you in that, that movement of that dopamine to be secreted for the rest of the day. Well, cold exposure or cold plunging was popularized by a man named Wim Hof. And he's from the Netherlands. And he has the nickname, can you probably guess, the Iceman. Okay, <laughs> for good reason. So Wim Hof got this nickname because he actually performed many world records. They include, check this out, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in just shorts, running a half marathon above the Arctic Circle barefoot. Now, he did have clothing on, but it was just shorts like you see him here in a hat, and standing in a container while covered to, with ice cubes up to his neck for over 112, sec, uh, 112 minutes. It's almost two hours. So the Iceman. And this picture doesn't even do justice what he's done. Because of Wim Hof, the benefit of cold exposure and cold plunging has been, been attracted by a lot of people, tens of thousands of people. It's widespread, and they do this every single day. So I'm one of the crazies. Another prized possession I have is my Jeep Wrangler. So that's my Jeep. My Jeep Wrangler is... is that's my dream car. That's, ever since I was small, I always wanted a Jeep. I, I just love the way it looks. It's a 1941 war machine turned recreational vehicle. It's so rugged, it's versatile, it can go over anything, although I did have tire slippage on snow yesterday in the mountains. I don't know what that was about. But it's just as versatile going into the mountains as it is getting groceries down the street. And there's solidarity among our, our fellow Jeep Wrangler owners. Now, if you own a Jeep, that's... Not important. If you own a Jeep Wrangler, that's, that's it. That's where it's at. So Jeep Wrangler owners, as you, you pass each other on the street, you give the Jeep wave, kind of this, this peace sign. But it's a tip of the hat, a nod towards other Jeep Wrangler owners because you're part of that club. And, and outside of just the Jeep wave, let's say you're walking through a parking lot and you see another Jeep and you admire that Jeep, you'll give them one of these things, a duck. 
I don't even know how this got started, but I've received some of these, and that means that somebody has admired my Jeep, my custom work on my Jeep, or even if it's stock and you just like the color, you give them a duck. Who wants a duck? I have lots here. Who wants a duck? <laughs> Almost, yeah. If I hit you, I am sorry. <laughs> You're good. Who else wants a duck? Almost. Yeah. Cameron. One more duck. I got a pink one with a mohawk. Who wants this one? Deanna. Oh, nice. Yes. Wonderful. Nicely done. So, you now have been ducked. And that's what it means to get a duck from a Jeep owner who admires your Jeep. And I carry around a big bag of these in my back seat. So if I see Jeeps in parking lots that I think look cool, and I'm not giving them out all the time, but they have to look really cool. And, and in the Jeep community, we've, we've got people who take their Jeeps up and they crawl on rocks defying gravity. Or if you're less uh, daring like me, you might go on a gravel road, you know, like you see in the, the picture here, or a fire road, or, or just something that's up in the mountains that's not too dangerous. Or maybe there's there's uh, Jeeps, Jeep owners who are content to drive pavement princesses who shuttle the kids from sports to getting groceries. Those of us who own a Jeep Wrangler, we don't care why you own one. We just love you that you do, even if it's stock. Another prized possession I have are my trail shoes. Now, the ones that are on the slide there look a little different, but those were years and years ago. So when I wear them out, I get new ones. My trail shoes have taken me... so. If you didn't know this about me, I have gone around the globe running and doing adventure races or hiking, and I've also gone on missions trips. These, these trail shoes uh, primarily have been used for either hiking or adventure racing. So most of my decade of my 30s have been doing this crazy stupid stuff. And I ran various obstacle course races such as uh, winter trail race, and that was in Illinois, very cold. Uh, Tough Mudder, Warrior Dash, and Spartan Race. That was one of my favorites, and many others. Uh, Braden and I have actually ran adventure races before, and somehow, some way, I convinced Lisa to do that too. And it, it wasn't her thing, though, and I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> and I don't have a picture of her, and you're, you're welcome. Yes. But running these races, it wasn't about the race. It wasn't about the challenge or even the environment in which we ran, because we ran in backwoods, we ran in, on mountains, we ran, uh, actually we ran in sports stadiums too. We ran in Soldier Field where the Bears play, we ran in uh, Miller Park, and it's been called something else, but I will always call it Miller Park, where the Milwaukee Brewers play, and I ran in uh, the Chicago Raceway, uh, the, the Chicago Speedway racetrack, which was fun too, uh, but it was about really forming a team of people to do this with me. And I traveled across the country with this team sometimes, and we would run races together. And then there'd be people who we would get familiar with and see at various races around the country. And that race community was what it's about. One final picture, or final uh, inanimate object that is a prized possession of mine is my gym that I used to own, Synergy Kettlebell Training. So this is one of my gyms. And, and when I had my business in Illinois, so this wasn't just a gym or just a place to work out. Our niche was kettlebell training. And we were actually one of the very first kettlebell gyms in the United States. We had a staff team that was the most licensed and certified, had the most education and experience of any kettlebell coaches. And I actually had my own proprietary kettlebell certification that trained coaches to become coaches. I worked with three other organizations to go around the country and train their trainers. And we even had a kettlebell sports team. And, and this, this was a team that, like the adventure racing team, we would travel around the country and we would compete with kettlebells. But most of the people who came to our gym, most members had no desire to be part of that competition team. That's why it's so small, <laughs> because we were the crazy ones. But th most of the people, if you want to go back to the other picture, Ethan, actually, most of the people, they just wanted to get fit, they just wanted to get in shape, they just wanted to feel healthy. Several years in a row, we actually were voted by our community as the number one fitness gym in all of Fox Valley area in Illinois. 
And these guys, they just wanted to be a community of fitness enthusiasts to surround themselves in a healthy environment, to be in shape, to get healthy, and to focus on something that impacted their health. And of course, they had to put in the work, right? But they realized real quick that it wasn't just about the workout. It was about doing this together. And you see, they had, they had lots of options, lots of options. In fact, in our complex that, that this gym was in, we had four other fitness studios. So why did they choose us? It's because we focused and had the, our priority on community. And the same community is going strong even despite the pandemic, even today. So what do all these, these things have in common? What is the plunge, my Jeep, my trail shoes, which these need to get more work in there. At least we're going to go hiking a lot this, uh, this summer. And, and my gym, what do they all have in common? Their communities. These inanimate objects somehow have had their own community built around them. And these communities are because others share the same passion together, although sometimes crazy, and we want to share this experience together. Communities share together. And as Christians, we have been called to share the gospel to the world. This is a great responsibility, but it's also daunting. And how do we effectively share the message of Christ to a world, to a society who is becoming more and more hostile towards Christianity? One approach is to live in missional communities. The hope and goal, goal is to show people who we really are so that we have the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. According to God, it doesn't matter where we live, what we've done, what's been done to us, or, or where we are in our own head even. He views us the same, and he invites us into his community. Paul said, For the Scripture says, Everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all blesses richly, richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? How, and how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Peter said, For you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He has called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. So what these passages are telling us, what God is telling us through these passages are that those of us who bring the good news of Jesus, essentially doing a show and tell about Jesus and what he's done for us in our life and what, they can, what he can do in the lives of others, it's not just that we have beautiful feet, although some of us may, <laughs> but we are part of a greater community, God's family, and we all belong to him. So do you share the good news of Jesus every day? Are you part of a missional community who gets to be intentional and help people find and follow Jesus through your own common interests? Do you want to have beautiful feet? Well, I'm going to tell you how. Let's start with sharing good news. Start by sharing it. As followers of Jesus, it is our duty and responsibility to share the message to the, this message to those around us. I think this, this is a message of hope and love and salvation, and that has power to transform lives and bring peace to this broken world. People need peace. People need their lives transformed. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is what he was sent here to do. This is what he said he was here to do. This is what he taught his 12 followers to do. And this is what they 
were commissioned to tell others. He commissioned, Jesus commissioned them to tell others to do. And it's been 2,000 years, but we are among those others. And we have that same commission. We were passed the baton by Jesus to share with others, to obey everything He taught us and model that and teach that to others. So how do we share? We share by living your faith. We must live our faith in a way that's evident that others see Jesus through the way that we live. Our love for God and, and others should be reflected in our action and our words. People should see the difference that Jesus has made in our life so that they want what He can do for them. We, next is we share because we love. We share because we love. Okay, well, that's a fill in the blank on your, your bulletin. Share because we love. Oops. We share the good news because we love others. It's a demonstration of God's love through us. It's a demonstration of love that we have to care for others by sharing Jesus with them. Because, like he said, if we receive Jesus, we have an encounter with him that sets us free in Jesus' name from being in a place of low spirit, from sin's effect, and being a captive to sin, being oppressed by the stress and burden of others and life, and to share God has favor for them. Next, be ready to share. Be ready to share. We must be prepared to answer questions and provide an explanation to the hope that we have in the good news. As Nick read earlier today, Apostle Peter says, but in your hearts, regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to any who ask you for a reason, for the reason, for the hope that is in you. Yet, do this with gentleness and respect. Next, share your story. Share your story. If I was having a show and tell about Jesus... And about what he's done for me, I might, I might say something like this. I have this tattoo to remind me of who I am. I grew up in a Christian house, and we went to church most Sundays. But I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I thought that it was about the church. I thought the church was the end result, and church life was where it was. And so when I turned 18, I graduated high school. I left my parents' house, and I'm out. I didn't go to church anymore. I dabbled in certain things that probably weren't good for me. And I was encouraged to do those things with the people I was around. So I became a person also who used people, and I squeezed them to get things out of them that I needed, and I didn't care about them as a person. I had anger issues, and because of who I was, I literally was lonely and burnt every relationship. But one day, God used a couple of guys to rattle me and finally get my attention. And I surrender to Jesus as Lord of my life, and He has totally transformed who I am. I literally laid down who I was, my identity, what I was doing, and I gave it to Him. And now I do everything to live for Jesus as Lord of my life because I have experienced His power, His life, His healing, and His love in me. Jesus died on the cross for me. He died on the cross for you. He died on the cross because he loves us. I have this tattoo to remind me of who I am. Everyone has a story. Share your story. When we share the good news of Jesus, it's important for us to share about him but we do that through sharing our story of what he's been doing in our lives. Revelation 12, 11 says, They conquered him, Satan, the adversary of God, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and by the word of their testimony, our story. We conquer because of Jesus and what he's done, but through our story is communicated his power. Now, we don't need to have arrived at anything spiritually significant or, or anything significant at all in our life. We just talk about how God has worked in our lives. All we need to do is share our story. Salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit, not us. Share and share boldly. 
Next, share, pray, and repeat. We must pray for opportunities to share about God and about the good news of Jesus. We can ask God to open the doors that bring the people to us or us to the people so that we could have conversations. We pray for God to give us courage to speak up and share his love with those who need to hear. Next, we share life in missional communities. A missional community is a group of believers who intentionally live life in a way that demonstrates the love of Christ to those around them. It is a group of those with common interests that focus on making disciples and sharing the gospel. This is being the church, not coming to church. Missional community helps us be more intentional in our evangelism. Now, whoa, 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 let's not get scared by that word evangelism, okay? Evangelism is just having a show and tell about Jesus. It's just sharing your story and what, about what God has done for you. And I've heard it said that evangelism or sharing the good news about Jesus is simply entering a conversation with someone God is already speaking with. When we live in community with others, we have more opportunities to share the gospel with those around us. Living in missional communities provides a supportive environment for growth and discipleship. Now, I do want to note that this is not a Bible study. It's not a Bible study group. Missional communities allow us to be more effective in serving our community and, and pooling our resources so that we can meet the needs of those who, who, who are looking for something. So we can meet their needs in an impactful way. When we discover a need for someone, we don't just sit on it and say, I'm just going to pray about it. No, what we do in a missional community is we figure out a way and start moving to meet that need within 24 hours. We don't delay, we move, and we do it together. So how do we live in missional communities? We must be intentional when we build relationships with those around us. And this means to get to know our neighbors, our coworkers, baristas, garbage men, clerks at stores, business owners, and anyone in the community that we can. Next, we must be willing to serve others in practical ways. We must be willing. This can be as simply as offering help with your neighbor to do yard work. Or it might mean that you bring a meal to a neighbor who needs something. We must be bold with sharing in those environments when we can, when we see opportunity, be bold to share our story, and the gospel through that. And this means that we are always talking about this so that we can invite people to church, to Alpha, you bring people with you to Alpha, or to your missional community together. And what does it look like to live in a missional community? Well, living in a missional community takes different forms because this might depend on your context, your interests, or your abilities. For example, it might look like hosting a neighborhood block party or inviting people to your home. And it might mean signing up for our church's community garden and helping people plant veggies so you can have conversation while you plant food. It might mean volunteering at our next Willowbrook Food Pantry and bringing people with you who would like to also do things in their community for those in their community. It might mean you volunteer to mentor at-risk youth and unfortunately, we have a lot of that. However you do this, the goal is to demonstrate the love of Christ out of you to those around you and share, intentionally share the gospel in a way that is natural and authentic in conversation. You must be in community with people to have conversation with people. You must be in community with people to have conversation with people. Okay, really though, I'm introverted and I don't like other humans. Right, introverts? <laughs> this is how we think. In order to like people, well, actually, if we're being real, we don't like a lot of people outside of maybe a small circle of people that we can tolerate, who are safe and, and who don't drain us of energy. <laughs> But really, to fulfill the call of helping people find and follow Jesus, we have to do things outside of ourselves. We have to. We have to get out of our own heads, get uncomfortable, and do things with other people. And sometimes this is painful. Admittedly, it is for me, too. 
But this is our mission. This is our calling from, from God. Not, not from us, from God. Not for us, for others. For others to experience something life-changing. And for this to work in my own head, I have to think of the results. I have to think of the results of what God does in us and through us into the lives of others and think about how he's going to impact them and trust that he will. Life is about God and others being in relationship with God and living in missional community, and the cycle continues. And there are missional barriers. Sometimes that's us. Do you make yourself available throughout the day, or are you prioritizing other things? Are you making yourself available for God to bring you to other people or Him bringing other people to you? God is on the move. Ask Him to show you His people. Typically, God calls you right where you're at, right where He has you. Where are you already being sent? And you don't want to go anywhere that's not going to have a potential for a relationship. Because it, remember, it's all about relationship. Missional communities are bringing heaven, God's kingdom, here on earth. The good news of Jesus is happening, and what's happening in heaven can and is happening here on earth. Our part in the kingdom is helping people connect to God and finding and following Jesus. Sunday services and weekly Bible studies are just a part, a small part of God's kingdom. But there's so much more to God's kingdom than that. How can you think of ways that you're already, what, uh, what you're already doing, things you're already doing? How can you think of that and invite people into it? What are you already doing that you could invite people into so that you're intentionally in an environment where you can share your faith? Has God been putting something on your heart recently or maybe for some time? Lean into that. What is that thing? Lean into it. You don't need to move real fast, but just move. What does it look like to start? Go and start. How do we start? Let's start by praying. Now, this isn't a prayer about doing nothing. This is a prayer about moving, because God is moving. This is a prayer about doing. Maybe we don't know where to go. Maybe we don't know what to st- how to start. Let's start with praying. Let's pray that God leads us, but you must be prepared to go and willing to go. Prayer and missional communities grow God's kingdom. This hinges on prayer, and everything we do here hinges on prayer. This is why we're focusing so much on our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Everything we do hinges on prayer. Prayer and missional communities grow God's kingdom. It doesn't happen by itself. If you're in this room, we have to be in prayer and be part of a missional community to grow God's kingdom, or you're just defaulting it to somebody else. This is exactly how God's kingdom grew when when we read about the early Christians in the book of Acts. Just getting people to church isn't getting it done. We need to go where people are. All the communities I mentioned earlier, that cold plunge, my Jeep community, the adventure racing community, the fitness enthusiasts, all of those that I, I personally had interest in those things or still do, and, and have found others who are like-minded in it. My business, it grew, and these communities grow by word of mouth. When we love a product or a business or anything, we talk about it, and, and we give that business or that product a referral. And this is how we build God's kingdom. God's kingdom is built the same way, by word of mouth. You have to open your mouth and share. And we become an army of people referring to Jesus. Jesus has changed my life, made my life better, and I tell others about him. Just like I try to convince everyone to to take a cold plunge. (laughs) 
So how do we start a missional community? Well, I'm sure your community, your missional community will be different than mine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will look different than mine. And my advice is to create a missional community right where you are with your interests, possibly something you might already be part of. And do this in your context of life. So Don, you love hummingbirds. How do you find more people who like hummingbirds and to talk about them with those people? So if you like knitting or quilting, running or walking, a book club, a yoga club, a Dungeons and Dragons game group, jamming with other musicians, Rob and Joel, drawing portraits, woodworking, making art, writing, playdates at the park with kids or grandkids, gym crawling, fire pit on your driveway for neighbors to come over. You gather at the, the community garden and plant vegetables and, and, and flowers, an open mic or karaoke night, or whatever you're into, get into that group or start one. And look for others who are interested in that. And that forms your own missional community. And put people around you that you're going to be able to intentionally at some point share about Jesus. There's another pastor here in town, and he plays Dungeons and Dragons every Friday night with the group. And, in, and if you're uh, familiar with Dungeons and Dragons in the 80s, it was a big no-no in churches, but that was because people didn't understand it and got afraid of it. But he has people for the last three years coming to his house, and it's him and another guy from his church coming, and four or five other people who are coming are not yet believers, but he has opportunity to share about them. And he's having that game be the catalyst. And he met this this, these game nerds in another gaming store, and he invited them over. That's a missional community. Well, let me conclude by saying that living life in a missional community is a powerful way to share the gospel. Jesus wants us sharing his life through relationships in ours that show, not just tell. Living life in a missional community allows us to be intentional in our evangelism. Supportive in discipleship and effective in our service to others. As we seek to fulfill our calling to share the gospel, we must hinge everything we do on prayer. Everything. Be bold and willing to step out of your comfort zone by faith, even if it's painfully so. And intentionally live life in a missional community to grow God's kingdom. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew and also to the Greek, and that's all of us. That's what that means. Are you ashamed to share your faith? Think about why you would be ashamed. Probably because you don't know how people would receive it or people, people, people. It's always having to do with people. Or maybe you're not feeling like you're equipped enough. Well, get equipped. Find a way. Don't be ashamed. We all in this room know more about the faith and Christianity and, and have more to go on in the Bible than everyone who started sharing, and, and even Paul in his day, because he was writing the scriptures we now read. We are better equipped today. Let's live this way too. Pray with me. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your gospel that says that we are changed, we are yours, your possession. Help us to find a way, whether we're in a group now or, or we're, we're feeling this nudge by your spirit to start and form a missional community, help us to find a way to be part of one. Help us to be intentional by sharing our faith. Give us boldness, give us conversational opportunity. Help us to unashamedly share about you because we want to grow your kingdom and have other people experience a life change like we do. And maybe we haven't experienced a complete life change yet. It's a work in progress, and you're still working. Help us to continue surrendering and trusting you to change our life. Help us to not delay on starting these missional communities. Compel us. Nudge us to share. Put us in places that require us to share about you. And give us the word so we don't need to try to think or have an excuse that we don't know what to say so we're not going to say anything. Help us to have the words. Give us, flow them out of our mouth that we're speaking things and we don't even know where they're coming from to penetrate the heart of those who are hearing it. 
In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to do our, our open worship time now, and if you are feeling led by the Holy Spirit to share anything, Lisa is going to have the mic up front here and come up and share. If you have um, thoughts or maybe you want to pray, maybe you, you just want to read something that God has been putting on you, um, this is the time for that, not time for announcements, but time for things that the Holy Spirit is sharing in you or to you to be shared to us here. On the screen, there's some ponder, uh, prompting questions to think about as well. How am I loving Jesus well to the people around me? Am I currently living in a missional community? Is there one I can join, or how can I begin one with people of my common interests? How is God calling me to intentionally share my faith? So these are questions to ask and to pray about, but feel free to come up during this time and share as well, and then I'll close us afterwards. We had to change doctors because we moved and our doctor went to another deal. He doesn't take our insurance anymore. So I asked my wife to find me a doctor, and she did. I found out his previous occupation was running a tavern, and now he's a medical doctor. He said he finally wised up and decided to do what was better. But I was reading in Proverbs this morning, 10.22, says, A cheerful heart is a good medicine, and I know he's going to ask me what medications I take. So I think I'll just tell him a cheerful heart, and I'm supposed to take a couple others. I'm borderline something or other, but I don't. I don't haven't taken them for a couple of years, and he'll probably question me about that. And I'll question him about his medications that he takes to see if one of them is a cheerful heart. Uh, I was also reading Psalm 145, 17 through 21, and it simply says, "The Lord is righteous; He is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to us; He hears our cries." The Lord protects us. And then there's another one in there. It says, he grants our desires when we fear him. So he impressed me to write down my desires, and I wrote down four or five of my desires. I realized that I really don't desire a lot. He's pretty much fulfilled all my needs. I desire that my faith in him will remain as strong as it was when I first became a believer. I had a tremendous faith in him, and I don't want that to ever weaken. I want it to grow stronger. I want to be a blessing in my old age and not a problem when I get there. <clears throat> I want to continue to lead people to Christ. I want to always be content with what he provides for me. I want to know the difference between my needs and my wants, and I want to bless my wife. So it's not comfortable for me to stand up in front of a group of people and share this, but I had a good session with the Lord this morning before coming to church. This is the Bible scripture that showed up in my hands, and it is, this is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad. The beauty of the day is not that it is new, but that we are being made new. 
So things are going on in my life as with everyone. And one of my things has been partnership with the Lord. I made a year commitment to lose weight, to better my health, so I could better serve the Lord. The glory of the day is not that it marks a change, but that we are being changed. I have lost 75 pounds, and that is the mark. The glory is my body is being changed so I can better serve my Lord. Thank you. Well, last weekend I went to my youngest daughter's home in Portland to have some time with her. And while we were having breakfast at the table, all of a sudden she started sharing something about her life that I already knew about, but she's had a lot of tragedy in, in her life, but now she's right on with the Lord and her, hu and her new husband. And um, she was able to share that, and it was just a wonderful thing because she had never said any, she never spoke a word about it, she just kept it all inside of her, and now she's gotten it out, and we feel closer than ever. Wendy has already shared how much uh, we missed. <laughs> Being here. <clears throat> I haven't even started yet and I can't get it out. <laughs> but it is so good to be here and to be in the presence of other people who worship the same God that I do. And I'll... I'll this is stuff that I've just jotted down, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, it's always in, inspired by what is being said, but sometimes God takes me places that may not have a whole lot to do with what was said up here. And this is uh, very new, so I'm kind of kind of venture out for just a moment, and I said one of the th reasons that fellowship is so valuable to me here is to spend and know other people who are as imperfect as I am, and we all know that we're imperfect. And yet we feel and sense the presence of God's Holy Spirit here. And that's an encouragement to me because I'm very aware of my own failures and imperfections and the things that I don't do well or right. And what that means is that, that all these other people who are here, who are as imperfect as I am, express the Holy Spirit in their lives by being here and sharing this together, then I can do that too. We don't have to be perfect in order to share the Holy Spirit that is within us. God is perfect. And he speaks through our imperfections, our jars of clay, as the Bible says. And you know what? I think that that is probably the most powerful expression of God's spirit to those around us. If we think we have to behave perfectly and you know, have a little halo over our head all the time when we share with people around us, you know what? I think that's probably a little bit off-putting because they know we're not perfect. And we enjoy spending time with each other. And let's face it, sometimes in our own humanity, there are people that just rub us the wrong way. They don't have to do anything in particular, sometimes just breathing, and we have a problem with certain people. And God gives us strength, though, <laughs> and patience, and hopefully tact in knowing how to deal with that. 
but it is what uh, Bob was talking about, intentional uh, missional communities. We're here on purpose. We're here to praise God. We're here to help each other. We're here to share that expression in our own lives, and it's unique for all of us. We don't all have to have been saved from a life of drugs and prison and all those other things when I was a kid that I wish I could have had a testimony about because I was kind of a good church-going kid all the time. Grew up in southwest Idaho. By the way, Idaho, have you ever noticed in movies that in Idaho, if someone's going to disappear forever, they move to Idaho and you never hear from them again. So that's kind of <laughs> what Idaho is famous for. But um, so all that being said, let me go ahead and read my notes because I kind of went off track here. Um, we gain strength and joy and encouragement by gathering together and sharing the unique expression of the Holy Spirit, uniquely expressed in each of our lives because our experiences are unique. We all bring different colors to this fellowship that we have, and the joy and the expression of all those colors are just an amazing thing. That's what makes church something special. And in spite of all our imperfections and our uniqueness, the thing that unites us is the Holy Spirit who makes us one. If we feel unity and if we feel togetherness and if we feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit, it's because he's here. And if you're feeling like your life right now is kind of imperfect, don't worry so much about that. Just trust in the Holy Spirit. He will work with you. He will take you from wherever you are. And if you listen to him and spend time with him, he will take you to where you need to go. God can speak in powerful ways expressed honestly by each of our personal experiences. And I thank God for all of you who are here today and that Wendy and I can be here again being away from a couple of weeks really <laughs> develops an appreciation for what we've missed, and it's just good to be here. Praise God. Are all hearts clear? So I'll close this with prayer, but the worship team can come back up. Um, I do want to say, though, I would love to have three to five individuals three to five people who want to join me in creating a new missional community. This may not be a community that we are doing together, but we'll talk about maybe how this looks in your own life. And if you're interested in piloting this over the next year with me, I want to get this started in the beginning of March. Let's have a conversation. So I'm looking for three to five people who want to start unique missional communities. Let's have that conversation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we enjoyed being part of, of what you're doing. You're still working in us, and we invite you to work through us into the lives of others, not just in this room, but especially out of this, this building, into our neighborhoods, into our communities, into the coffee shops we go in, into the grocery stores, into the post office, down our block as we walk dogs or just go on a bike ride. Help us to move at an interruptible pace so that when you bring people to us and you give us the words to say, you give us courage, we speak and your words transform their lives. Help us to take your prompting and, and create these missional communities that do much more than what we could ever do here. Help us to prayerfully grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen.
to the poor to bind up the broken hearted and make you known even more so that people living in darkness will see the great light I'll be your carrier of love and compassion. I'll be the carrier of light to the world. I'll be the carrier of hope and salvation. I will go shine your light to the world. I will go shine your light to the world. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me Freedom and truth to proclaim Trade your ashes from the oil of gladness And your sorrows for garments of praise I'll be the carrier of love and compassion I'll be the carrier of light to the world I'll be the carrier of hope and salvation I will go shine your light to the world I will go shine your light to the world here in my sin Send me here in my send me send me here in my send me send me here in my send me send me and I'll be the carrier of love and compassion I'll be the carrier of light to the world I'll be the carrier of hope and salvation I will go shine your light to the world I will go shine your light to the fantastic week. Be a carrier in a positive way. <laughs> God bless you. I'll be the carrier of love and compassion. I'll be the carrier of light to the world. I'll be the carrier of 